Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Palm Sunday, our 10 a.m. service. Uh, before we begin, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning humbly and submitted to you. Lord, you came here to earth to do one thing, that is to die for our sins and to give us eternal life. Lord, I pray that you will fill us with your spirit this morning as we come to worship you, as we praise you with our hearts, as we give you thanks for all you have done for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that if we are feeling apathetic or confused or, or suffering, Lord, that you remind us that you are good, that you remind us that you love us, and that you remind us that peace only comes from trusting in you. Lord, we pray for all the things that are happening in the world, especially right now still in Ukraine, and just even the last week when the many people died at the train station. Lord, we just want to give a moment just to mourn the loss of those people. And Lord, through the hurt and the suffering, Lord, you are the answer to life. You're the answer to the destruction of the evil that is in this world. So Lord, give us a renewed mind and a renewed heart, a new excitement for you as you bring your kingdom here on earth. And Lord, that you don't do that yourself, but that you share that ministry with us. So Lord, I pray and ask that you would empower us, that as we come and remember your death and resurrection, that we leave this building going out as your light, going out to bring the good news of who you are to people. Let us not be apathetic. Let us not be lazy. Let us not be afraid that we go out to proclaim your word. Lord, you came in peace. But Lord, the fight is not that peaceful. So Lord, I pray that we will not be afraid, that you give us strength to go out and do your will and not our will. And in trusting you, we will have peace. Thank you for this time of worship. Prepare our hearts for the battle, but knowing that you have already won. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we stand? Let's read uh, a verse from Zechariah. And this is a time of our worship. Uh, we're taking a little pause for music, and I love that we had that video and just a little bit of music, so refreshing, and that's really the point. We wanted to remove it for just a little bit so that when we do bring it back, it's going to be glorious. And so right now, we're going to dig into the Word, and we're going to read Zechariah 9, 9 to 17, because this is the prophecy that came true when Jesus came into Jerusalem. So let's read this together. It says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations, his rule will extend from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I will bend Judah as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rouse your sons, Zion, against your sons, Greece, and make you like a warrior's sword. Then the Lord will appear over them. His arrow will flash like lightning. The sovereign Lord will sound the trumpet, and he will march in the storms of the south. And the Lord Almighty will shield them. They will destroy and overcome with sling stones. They will drink and roar as with wine. They will be full like a bowl used for sprinkling the corners of the altar.
The Lord their God will save his people on that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. How attractive and beautiful they will be. Grain will make the young men thrive and new wine the young women. Zachary 9, 9 to 17. Sorry, I know there was a little technical difficulty, but hopefully you can read that and listen to that. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you that you know what's going to happen. You know already the full plan. And Lord, we see that this prophecy, even a hundred years later when Jesus finally came, we see that your promise is true, that whatever you say will happen. And so Lord, help us to learn to trust in you no matter what goes on because you are in full control. Be with us now as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Every second week of the month is a time that we decide that we're going to take the Lord's Supper together. And this meal is a time that we can remember and commemorate what Jesus did for us on that cross. And so when he had the last supper, to them it wasn't the last supper, it was just any other Passover meal. But to Jesus, he knew that this was the last supper for him and his disciples. And so he took the bread and said, this is my body that is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And they didn't know what was going to happen to him. But when Jesus finally went to the cross and died, that's when they understood, wow, this is my Lord who broke his body for me. So that's what we remember as we eat as well. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of me and you will proclaim the day that I will come back. And so we drink to remember that it's through Christ's blood that we're cleansed. It's through his love, his death on the cross, that our sins are washed away and forgiven. And so hopefully as we eat this bread and drink this uh, grape juice, that we will remember what Jesus did for us. Okay, so can we stand one more time? Let's partake in this together. Let's eat the bread first. And again, he took the cup and said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. Let's drink together. I'm going to give you a little moment so that you can pray on your own and reflect on God's sacrifice for us. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all you will continue to do. And Lord, it's every day and every moment that we're cleansed. It's every day and every moment that you keep us righteous. You keep us holy. And Lord, may this meal remind us that we can't save ourselves. Only our faith in you, that is what saves us. Lord, renew us so that we can continue to be a walking testimony of your goodness, your faithfulness, your obedience to the Father. Thank you for this time that we have to be able to commune with you, to to commune with other brothers and sisters, not just here, but around the world, all believers, that we proclaim that you are the Son of God, that you are the one true God, and that you're the one who saves. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have some announcements for you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Palm Sunday worship service here at Cornerstone Evangelical Baptist Church. It is so good to see you and to worship with you in person. And for those of you online, I see you. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. 
Uh, we are going to go into a time of tithing and offering. This is our opportunity to give back to God what he's already given to us. And so please give cheerfully with a cheerful heart. At, um, and you can give at cabc.net. You can head to our church center app. And remember, there is a drop-down section for a 10 a.m. worship service. Um, and then there's also an offering box outside in the foyer. You can um, put in your offering that way. Or if you like writing checks, you can also write a check to um, CEBC um, and then make sure you put in the memo line that it is for your tithing and offering. Now, if you also want to drop off a check for your church retreat, um, you can go ahead and do so in the offering box as well with the check memo line saying church retreat 2022. All right, we're going to move into our CEVC Without Walls Challenge. This is our opportunity to challenge ourselves to grow and to be the church and to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. So this week, we have our challenge to take one minute every single day and commit it to God. Give him your heart. Pray with him and give him everyone, everything, every anxiety, every care, everything. Give it to God for one minute every single day and see how that changes your life. All right, so this upcoming, so this week is Palm Sunday. Next week is our Easter celebrations, and I'm so excited to, to just celebrate with all of you because God is so good. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to start off our um, festivities with our Good Friday service, Look to the Cross. It is April 15th, this Friday, here in the Little Theater, don't go to Silver, here in the Little Theater at 7.30 p.m. at 501 Cambridge here. Um, and then the doors open at 7, and we will have some refreshments. So join us in remembering the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And two days later, we are going to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, starting with our sunrise service, Living the Resurrection, April 17th, 6 a.m. bright and early. I will be there. Whew. I'm already just sweating thinking about it, but I'm so excited because I know that we get to start our day off right in celebration, remembering, and thanking God for the resurrection and the saving of humanity because of the sacrifice and resurrection of Jesus. And so 801 Silver Avenue at Romans Calf, and then... Um, so make sure you don't come here. We're going to be at Silver. And for those of you who are thinking, oh, man, like that's so early. Well, you know what? Let's, you know, maybe we can go out to breakfast afterwards together as a congregation, as a worship service to um, break bread together. And then we can join up together with the rest of the English worship. We can go to um, our big Easter com English combined service at 1115 at 801 Silver in the Sanctuary. Um, so that's going to be our main event. Um, please invite your friends. And I'm just, I'm super excited. <laughs> um, and speaking of excited, because that day, if there's not already so many things to celebrate, we're also going to have a really special event called Freely Give and Joyfully Receive. This is our opportunity to just in the spirit of Easter, because God has given us so much so generously, it's our opportunity to do the same for our church so that we can give and also be blessed in receiving. And so how we're going to do this is we, are, we encourage every single one of you to drop off an item or a you know, some goodies, some knickknacks, um, something that you want to give to the church or to, um, to people, individuals, and you are free to take anything that you have, that you see there as well. Um, there are a couple rules that we have, so we are going to make sure that every single item that you provide has to be new, or if you're going to bake some goodies, maybe you can individually wrap it with a label that says, you know, something along the lines of um, chocolate chip cookies, sugar-free, or oatmeal cookies, um, no nuts. And so just make sure that people know what they're getting into, especially if they're eating something, and we want to be respectful of allergies. Um, and so make sure you drop off your, your knickknacks, your goodies, your baked goods uh, by 11 a.m. in the rotunda in Rotunda at 801 Silver. And then if by chance someone doesn't take your items that you brought for this event, that's okay. Just if you could please take it back home or arrange for someone else to take it for you so that we don't have to worry about all the extra surplus. Um, but if you have any questions, please contact Margaret. And 
I don't know, moving on, we're gonna talk about, which I'm super excited for, looking to the future, June 3rd to 5th is our all church retreat um, called God's Promises. It will be at the Spring Hill Suites by Marriott San Jose Fremont. Um, it will be about 400, it will be $400 per person, but if you wanna share a room with someone and cut the cost, or if you just want a little extra fellowship time, there's an added bonus that it might be a little bit cheaper because you're sharing the room cost. And so um, please don't let money deter you from going. If you are scared by the $400 big price tag, don't worry. If you're sharing a room, we can give you back the money that you saved by sharing a room. Or you can contact Pastor Josh and we will take care of you because we want you there. This is our opportunity and I want to make sure I get this right so I'm going to read this. The purpose of this overnight retreat is for our church body to get closer to God and to each other. This is our opportunity to get away for a weekend to reflect on the promises of God, spend time together through sharing, messages, games, activities, food, and casual free time. So if you have any questions at all, any concerns, please contact Pastor Josh. Uh, we also will not be having 10 a.m. worship service on June 5th here. We're actually going to have it at our church retreat. And so how great is that, that we get to also, you know, have a little staycation, get away from it all, be able to fellowship with each other, and then worship our God together as one body on Sunday morning. I mean, come on. I don't know if you're not excited, get there, because it is going to be so cool. <laughs> um, and just a reminder, today is our last day to register. So... There might be a quiet panic amongst all of you because maybe you haven't registered yet and you've been thinking and praying about it. Um, but for those of you that are a little bit scared, um, we can do it together because in classical Katie fashion, I have procrastinated and I have not registered either. So if you wanna have a buddy to do it together, let's do it after service. <laughs> we can register online on our phones and it's a quick and easy form. I've seen it. I just haven't filled it out yet. Maybe that's you too, but join me in signing up because I want to make sure I'm there and I want to make sure you're there. So if you have any questions or if you missed anything because I was talking too fast or because there is a lot, you can head to uh, cebc.net or our ch church center app and you can find out more information that way. Okay. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Don't forget to register with me for the, uh, for the retreat afterwards. And I have the honor of introducing Pastor Josh. Cool. Thanks, Katie. Um, Casey, good morning to the people around you. Hello. Nice to see you. Oh, we have some new people, too, that I haven't seen in service exciting. If you're joining us online, welcome online. Do put, say hello in the chat. I know it's scary. I do look at the chats and it's lonely because I know I'm the only one who puts anything on there. So say hello, say good morning. Um, you know, if you're watching during the week, it's okay. You know, you can't put it on the chat, but we really appreciate that you're watching and um, not just so that you can watch, but really just so that you can be encouraged by God's word. And so today we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And not only that, it's also a chance for us to really kind of reflect and think back about who Jesus is. And that's really important because a lot of times we, we think we know, especially those of us who have been at church for a while, maybe you grew up in the Christian home and you just know about Jesus. And, but there's, I will challenge you, there's so much more about knowing Jesus. And the only way we can know that is not just by listening to me talk for 20 minutes, it's by digging into God's word. And there's so much, and each time you read it, God will reveal more things to you. So I'm so excited to share you know, a message with you this morning, and the title today is, Who is This? And that's the question you should be asking, not only because you know Jesus or you've been a Christian, but for everybody to keep asking, who is this person? Who is this Jesus? Do I really know him? How much do I know him? What does it mean to know him? Is it just something in my mind, or is it something that goes into my heart and out to my hands and feet? And so who is this? And so before we begin, let's ask the Holy Spirit and God to really reveal his word to us. Let's pray first. Dear Lord, we just thank you that you are our God, and that you don't just sit up there in heaven <clears throat> and just watch us and play with us and go, ha ha, look at you guys, but you came down to show us what it means to love. You came down to love your, your beings that choose to go a different way, to choose destruction, 
And yet, you love us. And yet, you die for us even when we're still sinners. So Lord, we just pray that you'll reveal to us who you are more and more as we dig into your word, as we desire you more, as we give you our heart. Lord, show us who you are this morning through your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So who is this? This is what it is about with the triumphal entry. There are people around who are just not sure if this is really the Messiah or not. They know and studied, you know, scripture, and people know that God is going to send somebody to save them. They don't know who. And so everyone's asking this question. This is around the time when Jesus is about to be crucified. But remember, we know that, right? We know that because we hear these stories. We celebrate Easter every year. But these people did not know what was going to happen. They didn't know that this man was going to die for the world and that he was going to be risen again. Even his disciples didn't know. And that's why it's so interesting with that Last Supper. We call it the Last Supper because we knew it was the Last Supper, but they didn't know. To them, it was just another Passover meal. But when Jesus finally died and he rose from the dead, that's when they realized who this person really is. And so today, we're going to go into Matthew chapter 21. If you have your Bibles with you, physical Bible, open it up. If you have your YouVersion app, you can open that up. It's also going to be on the screen. Matthew 21, verse 1 to 11. And it says here, as they approached Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples, and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Zechariah, which we just read this morning. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so my main point today, who is this? Let me give you the answer now. This is Jesus. And it's not just any person. Jesus comes as king. He is the Lord of lords. He is the king of kings. This is the savior of the world, the Messiah. He is the son of God in the flesh, fully man, fully God. Remember last week we talked about how he is also compassionate. He understands how we feel, especially when we hurt. He understands our pain. He understands our suffering, and yet he loves us. Yet he cares for us, and yet he still gives us eternal life. And so Jesus comes as king. And so when you're asking, who is Jesus? Jesus is? Jesus is? Yes. Okay, good. That's all you need to know for today. All right, we're done. (laughs) Jesus is king. But what does that mean? Do you call him king? Do you just say that? Or do you actually live that out? Right? We don't really have kings, right, in the way that we live nowadays. But if you think about a king, he's the ruler, the one who controls everything, and everybody else is a servant, right? People who are loyal to the king will do everything that the king wants because that's who we serve. And so if Jesus is king, do you serve Jesus fully? Do you trust him fully? Do you know him fully? A couple years ago, well, actually not even a couple, I think like more than 10 now, um, raise your your hand if you know the name Amic Byram. All right, some of you do, cool. And that's probably only because 
he came here before, right? Raise your hand if you knew who A. McByram was before he came to our church like 10 years ago. Ah, nice. Okay, one. <laughs> now, I, I laugh at that because I didn't know who A. McByron was. It's kind of an interesting name. We don't hear that a lot. But you probably seen him before in movies, in TVs. You probably heard his voice. He was the singing voice of Moses in Prince of Egypt. You'll love this one. He played the father of Counselor Troy in Star Trek Next Generation. That was really cool. He was also um, part of the barbershop quartet in Friends. So you've seen him, you've heard him, and he's all over the place. But if you didn't know him, if you didn't know, oh, that's A. McByram, you wouldn't know, right? I wouldn't know until I actually met him, until I know him. So now, when I watch these things again, or reruns, or if I see him in something, it's like, hey, I know that guy. But to anybody else, if he walked down the street, no one's going to be like, whoa, Amy McBurn. Like, sorry, Amy. <laughs> like, oh, I want your autograph. And it's just like, it's just not as, you know, famous, not as known. And I bring that up because sometimes Jesus is like that to us. If you don't really know who Jesus is, you're going to miss out on the most amazing thing. Because this Jesus is the son of God and the creator of the world. Do you know what I mean? But he comes, this is my first point, he comes in peace. He comes quietly. He doesn't make a big noise, but it's because he doesn't have to. But the ones who are smart, the ones who are really seeking God, they're going to seek after this man, this Messiah. They're going to try to find him with all their heart. Jeremiah 29, 13, our theme, half my heart. They're going to want to know. But do you really know how to look for him. Do you know what the signs are? Do you know what he is like? Or is he like Amy Byron? You won't even really know him until I shared. And now you're going to look and look at that episode in Star Trek and be like, whoa, that, that's him. That's crazy. You wouldn't know unless you knew. And so do you really know who Jesus is? And Jesus is king. He might not look like it when he came in the triumphant entry, but he still is king. And so there's three things that I want to share with you today that you will remember that Jesus is king. And number one, that Jesus came in peace to bring peace. Who is this man? Who is this Jesus? He is the prince of peace. He comes peacefully to bring peace. Right? Reference to Zechariah here, right? The, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Zechariah. This was a hundred years ago for them. Now for us, it's just like an insane amount of time. But a hundred years, this prophecy that people understood, knew that this Messiah was coming, coming and he was going to come on a donkey. They're like, great, that's such a great story. And now people see it. Imagine they finally saw this happening. They're like, whoa, is this like a fairy tale that just like came to life? Right? What are people thinking? If you see something... Are you familiar with it? And that's how kind of Jesus works. He comes in peace, but he's going to come in peace because he wants people to really think and really know, is this who God was talking about, who Zachary was talking about, about this Savior to daughter of Zion, which is another word for Jerusalem, right? See, your king comes to you gentle, riding on a donkey, on a colt, the full of a donkey. Jesus came in peace. Do we know that this is the king of kings when he comes through? Because it's going to look very different. Right? Last week, we talked about Jesus' heart of compassion and how he feels our hurt when we hurt. Right? Um, I think this is the same thing because of all the pain and suffering of sin, you know, now God finally sends the king that everyone's been looking for. He finally sends Jesus and he sends a king that they've been waiting for to save his people and to bring peace once and for all. Now, here's the kicker. When I think of getting peace, I don't think about getting peace by being peaceful, right? I don't know if you're still following about Ukraine and stuff. I, I, I like, get angry. I don't even want to watch it anymore because it's like, okay, how, the only way to fight back is to fight back, right? How do you just sit and just let your enemy, like, destroy you? That just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense, Right? And so it's the same thing here. How does this, this man, this God who's supposed to save us, how does he come quietly? 
How does it come peacefully? It doesn't make sense. And when we think about peace, we think about like serene, like there's no storm, it's beautiful, and it's windy and nice, right? Just the right temperature like this past week, right? We think of peace, it's quiet, right? How is that going to destroy the enemy that's like hurting us and killing us right now? And so it doesn't make sense. It has this like upside down kind of thinking. But think about this, peace, right, can be interpreted as passive and quiet, but it can also be a powerful tool, listen to this, when we trust God to take care of the enemy. That's why Jesus comes in peace. That's why he comes humbly into this town where it's like, well, we really need a warrior right now, but Jesus is coming in peace because what he's about to do is going to be the greatest thing that God has ever done. And so we have to understand that this peace is something we don't understand and that the peace comes not because somebody's going to come and, you know, obviously God will rescue us, but maybe not in the way that we think. But the point is that Jesus comes in peace to bring peace, but the only way that we can have peace is to trust in God. He is going to take care of the enemy. He is going to rescue us. He is going to be that gives us life. He's going to be the one that gives us life. And so that's the first thing. Who is this? This is Jesus, the king. And he is here to give peace, peace beyond our understanding. And that means us trusting in him, that he is king, that he is God, that he will take care of the enemy. That's the first thing. Number two, remember this one. Who is Jesus? He is what? King. And he doesn't just come in peace, he also came to save, right? He came to save. And something about this is really important, is what these people are saying when Jesus came in. So look at this, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. And so they're saying these things. They're praising God, and they're saying, Hosanna, like finally the Savior. But really, they're just, if you notice, they're just memorizing Bible verses. They're just kind of reciting these things. They may not really understand what it really means. They're just kind of saying these things. And so this word Hosanna is really interesting because Hosanna means God saves. But Hosanna was used in two different ways. Before Jesus was coming and all this stuff was happening. Hosanna was uh, an expression that people used to cry out to God and say, save us. God, please save us, right? It's that hard. Like, please, we're in trouble. Please save us. That was how Hosanna was used. Here we see Hosanna in the highest, and the word Hosanna is now slightly different because now we know the Savior is here. Now we know Messiah is here. So now, instead of saying, God, save us, now it's praise God. Now it's Hosanna. You have saved us. It has changed. Same word, different feeling. So when we know who Jesus is, when we know that he is king, our attitudes change. Instead of crying out in a way where it's like, please save us, because in that sense, we're still scared. In that sense, we don't fully believe that Jesus saves. We don't fully believe that he is king when we go Please save us. Because you don't know if he's going to save you, right? That's why you cry out. But if you really do know him, you're going to cry out differently. You're going to cry out in praise. You're going to cry out because you know that he is king. You're going to cry out because you know that he is God, that he is going to rescue you. It's a different heart. It's a different attitude. And so how do you cry out? Do you cry out the first way because maybe your faith is a little shaky Maybe you don't know if God's really going to rescue you or not. And so each time you're like, please save me, please save me, because you're not sure. Guess what? That shows where your heart is. It shows where your faith is. And your faith is shaky because the storm is happening. You don't know where Jesus is. He's asleep. Or you do know who Jesus is, and your expression is different. Even in the storm, you know Jesus is there. Even whatever, whatever is happening in your life, you know that God is going to save you. You know that he's going to rescue you. Maybe not today, maybe not next week, maybe it's not in your timing or the way that you think, 
but he will save you. He's shown it to us through him going to the cross. And he's going to continue to show that to you now. Amen? He rescued us before. He's going to continue to rescue us and then throughout eternity. Only he came to save us. Only he can save us. We can't save ourselves. You know, one of the things that's really difficult for me, and I'll be honest with you, I do the first cry. What are you saying if you do the first cry? I do that first cry so often because I'm just like, God, help me. Save me. I don't know what to do. I can't make this decision. This decision. And it's just helping me to realize that, you know, I call Jesus king, but I don't really live my life as if he is king. And so that's the same thing with these people. As Jesus comes in in this triumphant entry, people are confused. People are either believing that he really is the son of God or the believing that he might be, but they're not sure. Right? Something interesting here too is that some of the people here are the people who actually saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. And so there are people there who really understand, but there are some people who don't know what Jesus does they only know him through studying scripture, and so they're not sure. And so they're going to cry out a different way. So which way do you cry out? Do you cry out because you trust in God, because you know he's king? Or do you cry out because you're still struggling with knowing who he is? And I want to encourage you that it's, it's normal. We all have doubts and fears. We all still have some uncertainty, but I want to encourage you to have faith. I want to encourage you to cry the second cry, the good cry that says, praise God, I'm in this mess, I know, but I know you're going to rescue me. Do the second cry. Jesus came to save. If we know who Jesus is, we're going to express it and have a heart of gratitude and praise. And the third one here, this last one here, Jesus came to those who believe. It says here, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred, right? Stirred because some knew him and some didn't. It was just this confusion. And Jesus came in this donkey, right? This is the weirdest thing. Did you know that usually when a king comes, you see him with like his army, you see him with like, you know, all the gold and all that stuff. You're like, okay, this guy has what it takes to save us. Like, this is exactly what we're waiting for. You know, this strong man and his armor and like he's like ready to go right, on a stallion, but Jesus, he, he's very funny. I don't know what it is about Jesus, but he wants to do, like, the most opposite thing, right? He comes in his regular normal clothes, probably dirty because they've been, like, traveling in the desert, right? He probably didn't even wash his face. Nobody, like, knows who this guy is, and then on top of that, he should be, like, riding a stallion, right? But he chooses to ride not just any donkey, not the big one, the baby one. And if you think about this, picture this, right? Jesus is this grown man, probably 160, 170 pounds, sitting on this little donkey, baby donkey, and the poor baby donkey, nobody has ever ridden this donkey before. So can you picture this, this poor sad donkey just there like with his like, legs shaking, like what is going on? Who is this on my back? And it's just like the weirdest thing. And Jesus like sits on this donkey and comes in to like Jerusalem, these people that he's going to save. And then these people are like looking at this and like, wait, what? Who's this guy like in his like dirty clothes, you know, his sandals? He's probably not even wearing like the most expensive sandals. He's got it from Payless, right? Not the $950 one from Prada. I know I looked it up. So whatever it is, He's just coming in like a normal person, probably even worse than a normal person. He comes in like nobody. But he isn't nobody. He is Jesus. And so all these people are stirred. These people are confused. They're like, wait, this is the Messiah we're looking for? Okay, it says that in Zechariah, so all right, but this doesn't make sense. And I think Jesus did it on purpose, and that's why he does it on purpose for us. He sometimes confuses us so that we can really think do we really know Jesus? Do we really want to know him? Do we care to know him? And so that's why this question is so important on this Palm Sunday is, who is this? Everybody's asking. And I want us, I don't care if you've been a Christian for a long time, you should still be asking this. Who is this Jesus? Am I really believing that he is the king? Am I living like he is the king? And so these people are asking, who is this? The crowds answered not the disciples answered, the crowds answered, 
This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And the problem with this, that's not just who Jesus is. He's not just the prophet from this place from far away. He is the king of the universe, the creator. He was there with God when everything was spoken into existence. And that's what's so important here is we have to be careful because people can say, yeah, this is who Jesus is. We can say, yeah, I know who Jesus is. But who is Jesus really? Jesus came to those who believe. Once you have that heart and you believe Jesus is king, the Holy Spirit, I swear to you, will open up your mind, your heart, and you're going to start to see God in a way that you've never seen before. You're going to see him for who he is, king, king of all, Lord of lords. You know, it's really interesting to as I, you know, go to weddings, and, you know, in a wedding, you kind of understand, right, there's kind of appropriate dress, things like that, right? Obviously, for a bride and a groom, right, Obviously, the groom is going to be in, like, an attire. We know it's the groom. The bride is going to be a bridal dress, right? Uh, I think throughout the years, maybe it's just me and I'm getting old. I don't know. But back in the day when I went to, like, you know, my uh, uncles and aunties, their weddings, it was very traditional, right? Black tux, right? That kind of thing. And the bride always had a white dress, right? That was the thing. Nowadays, I see different weddings. It's a little more modern, right? Now that the... The bride still wears a bridal dress, right? So it's pretty still traditional. But I notice that the groom and the groomsmen are starting to be more like creative <laughs> in like what they wear. They can wear different colors. They can now wear sneakers. Like it's just so many different ways. But it's so interesting because you still know who the groom and the bride is, right? But now think of this. Imagine that the groom and the bride, this would be fun if you're having a wedding soon, Imagine that they just wore casual clothing or, or clothing that is just like the guests, right? It, it, would you be confused? Would people be confused? What do you think? Yes or no? Yes. yes? I would say no. And I say no because if you're going to a wedding, guess what you know who you're going for? You know it's your friend or family member or whoever it is. And I understand there might be some people who don't because your parents invited them and you don't want them there. But for the most part people aren't going to be confused. You're invited to the wedding because you know the people. It doesn't matter what they wear, you're going to know them, right? Um, there was one that I just saw a picture of, and they just love motorcycles. The bride didn't just walk down the aisle. She rode on a motorcycle down the aisle, right? It's just so weird. But I'm sure everybody at that wedding understood. They knew how much the couple loves motorcycles, whatever it is. If you're there, you know the people, it doesn't matter what the outside appearance looks like. That's my point. That's why when Jesus comes, he comes to those who believe. If you believe that he is the son of God and he is king, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. It doesn't matter that he's sitting on this poor donkey that just like has no idea what's going on. It doesn't matter because we know that Jesus is king. We know that he's God's son. We know that he's going to rescue we know that he's going to save. We know that he's going to love us. But right, but we're still asking, who is this? Why do we still ask that question? Sometimes we don't have faith. So do you really know who God is or not? Do you really know who Jesus is or not? And so that's the challenge for all of you and for me too. As we live our life, does Jesus enter into our life? And do we see that as a triumphant entry? Or are we confused? Because we have to make a choice to go, no, this Jesus who entered my life is the Lord of my life, is the king. It may not look like it. People might tell me like you're crazy, but it's true and I believe it. And so who is this? Main point, Jesus comes as king. But for you, are you going to choose to believe that he is your king? How are you going to live out your life like he is your king? Because he is. And so the three things, right? Jesus came in peace to bring peace. Peace is not something we're supposed to understand. It's something that is given by God. And so when he comes in peace, do we trust that God will take care of the enemy? That God is going to take care of all the things that we can't take care of? Only he can save 
we can't. Which brings me to the next one. Jesus came to save. He came to rescue us. Even though we're not sure what that looks like, even we're not sure if he's going to or not, how are you going to cry Hosanna? Are you going to cry like you don't believe God is really going to help you? Or are you going to cry because you know he will because you trust him? And so you say Hosanna in a different way. And last one, Jesus came to those who believe. It's not about the outward appearance. It's not about how great or beautiful like a church looks or anything like that. It's really, at the end of the day, do we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he is the King? Then let's live that way. And the church is going to look different, not because of the outer appearance, but because of our hearts, because of who we call as King, because Jesus is our core. Jesus is our identity. We live for him. So as we reflect on this triumphant entry and Jesus coming in, continue to wrestle with that. Who is Jesus to me? Do I believe that he is the king? How do I live that out? It's not going to make sense, but it's going to take each day a step of faith to trust in Jesus. And so as we prepare this week, this is now Holy Week. This is the first week. Continue to pray and ask God this week. I challenge you, just a simple question. You're taking one minute a day to pray. And so take that, take that break and go, Jesus, who are you? Show me who you are. Ask that every day. And as we come and celebrate Good Friday and Easter, may Jesus reveal to you more and more who he is so that you can't deny it because he is who he is. And then we can live our lives for him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you that you came into our life, that you continue to come. And not just that, but you are so nice. You knock and you wait for us to open that door. You don't break down that door and you don't force yourself in. And Lord, it's because you love us so much that you want us to seek after you. Lord, thank you for being available to us that we don't even need a priest or anything to come to you, but we can right now talk to you directly, ask you directly. Lord, show yourself to us. Lord, help us to understand and believe that you are the Son of God, that you're the creator of the universe, and that you take care of us as you take care of the birds and who, who don't even store up in barns. Lord, you love us so much. Help us to trust in you. Help us to have peace because we know you are the one working. Help us to know that we can't save ourselves, only you can. And let us share that with other people who need to be saved. Lord, help us to believe in you. That when things around us doesn't seem the way that it looks, but we know who you are because of what you've revealed to us. We know who you are because when we accept you as our Lord and Savior, you send the Holy Spirit and you bring us into truth. You remind us of who we are. And so Lord, help us to look, not just on the outside, but the inside, more and more like you each day. May you really be the king of our life. And that wherever we go, people won't see us, they'll see you. May that be the triumphant entry that we walk around really bringing your gospel to everybody around us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let's stand and respond to this message by praying together. So let's stand together, and we're going to read this together as a prayer. And so let's begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being such a loving God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for sacrificing your life for us. Thank you for being mindful of us and becoming our Savior, Deliverer, and Liberator. Lord, we will praise you at all times. We will constantly speak your praises. We will boast only in you. We give thanks to you with our whole hearts. We bow before your holy temple and praise you for your unfailing love and faithfulness, for your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for making us right in God's sight through your resurrection and ascension. Because of you, we have peace with God. Through our faith in you, we have been brought into a plan of undeserved privilege, and we can confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Hallelujah. Lord, when we were utterly helpless, you came to earth at just the right time and died for us sinners. We realize that most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending you to die for us while we were still sinners. We declare that since we have been made right in God's sight by your blood, we are saved from God's condemnation. It is because of your death our friendship with God has been restored. Thank you for becoming our sacrifice. Thank you for enduring pain, shame, and humiliation for our righteousness. Because of you, we are God's righteousness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much. And there's just so many words that we can't even utter praise. But Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit will fill in and the angels will sing and we will all be able to glorify you. And that is the reality. That is the truth when we know that you are king. Lord, that we, as we continue to celebrate and, and also mourn the, um, uh, the, the destruction and the humility and the pain that you had to go through, Lord, that we understand your unconditional love. So thank you for not just staying up in heaven and watching us, but coming down, experiencing what we experience, and to show us the way, to let us know that you love us, that you save us, and only you can be the one that rescues us. Lord, help us to understand more and more and believe that you are our king. And may we leave this place today and every day after representing your kingdom. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you're here in person, we have some snacks for you. Don't forget, we will not meet here next week. We will have our English combined service at 1115 over at 801 Silver Avenue. Come this Friday. Good Friday. Doors will open at 7. We will be in here to reflect on what Jesus did for us. Thank you. God bless. See you next week.